Hey, welcome. It's a new week. We come with a new episode and we continue to discuss how do you measure the performance of your farm by scoring yourself. This is the third episode when you are grouping the sections of the dairy farm and looking at how do you measure so that you can improve. The whole purpose of making a measurement is know where you stand so, can, so that you can be able to improve. And a good consultant will be able to give you a recommendation, not only a score, because a score is not the most important. The most important is that action which you must do to be able to improve. In this episode, we're going to be discussing four areas. The issue of uh, recording, the carbon and comfort, the skill levels of the workers, and how you handle cows and their safety. Those are four areas. We look at how do we score those sections. Remember, the purpose of this subject is actually scoring to measure your performance. Not to explain how things are done, but how we score. Remember to subscribe to this channel, then you'll be able to get these lessons as they come. Let's go straight to the subject of how do you then score the handling of the cows and their safety. Now, when you look around the barn, cows will be moving around. Sometimes workers will be able to move them from one place to another. Maybe one cow is being uh, treated or cows, lactating cows are going to the milking parlor. We want to see how are they handled. If workers are pushing them and forcing them and forcing them to run, because cows ideally should move at a certain speed and with their hands drooping and not, and not uh, raising, then of course we know they are being mishandled. And if they are workers who also have sticks so that they can force cows to do certain things or to force them into spaces, again we score very low because workers are not friendly to the cows. In general, for the handling, we are looking at how friendly are the workers to the cows. You could have picked workers who came from a farm where cows were being forced or being mistreated or people are being uh, cruel to cows. So again, we discourage that, we give you a low score and give you advice on how to make your workers friendly so that cows are comfortable and they are not stressed and they are happy cows. When they are happy, you are happy. But also under the same area, we also look at the safety. Cows could be handled well, but the structure of safety is very low. Have you put stairs maybe on the, on the farm or very long steps that cows have to raise their legs to be able to make a step to the cable car coming from, walk, coming from the feeding area or from walking area? Then is that safe? Are there some holes found in the barn? In the barn? Maybe the floor has a lot of uh, holes that have come up because concrete has chipped out. Again, very dangerous to the hooves. Or maybe the barn has protrusions of nails, of pieces of broken metals or things that are thrown around. So we check that. How safe are the cows? And when we're, not, when we're not talking about safety, we are not just talking about safety in terms of uh, cows which are sleeping, feeding or walking around. It's also the natural behaviors that cows are going to mount on each other and therefore they are going to be at a higher space than where they are when they are resting or when they are walking. When they are mounting, are they able to mount without hitting the roof or hitting metal bars? Because they are going to mount anyway. Or when cows are fleeing, you remember that we had mentioned earlier in another episode that when cows are, are living together, they have some kind of an order. They have a senior cow and a junior cow. There's a cow that is more boss than the other cows. So when that boss hits the other, that cow should have space to flee. But if they are fleeing, and they are fleeing to a space where they cannot feed, then they are too stressed because they cannot flee, uh, uh, they can, they cannot flee normally. They should be as easy as cows in the pastures. The senior cow knocks on the junior cow. The junior cow has a lot of space to flee and then they can be able to live uh, peacefully. So it's always good to check how safe are the cows to do, to behave normally as they are meant to behave and how cows are safe in front of the workers. How do they talk to them? Cows that are treated well become more valuable. So always check the safety and the handling of the cows. Then you get a high score and probably you can be able to improve on the few things that are not looking so good. Remember, aim at five out of five. When it is below than that, below that, then there's a room for improvement. Now, the other part is about the barn design and the comfort of the cows. There we look at the general design of the barn. In another episode, we'll be able to talk about how the barn should be, how cows should be housed, the calves, the lactating animals, the sick animals, the cows that are calving and so on. But here we look at how are cows fitting in that barn. So we try to check on the things that could show us that the cows are uncomfortable. We look at the, the condition of the cow, uh, how, is the, how, is the, how is the space, are they able to, uh, is the air circulation good, is the bedding 
good, they are able to, to sleep on a soft bedding without being uh, struggling to, to uh, put their heavy weights on the, on the bedding because maybe it is too hard. Now, how about, are they able to move in good flows? How are the flows? Can the cows be able to flow from the barn all the way to the making parlor and back without having to reverse, without having through, go to go through a maze, without having to meet a bottleneck and having to crowd together and push each other. Now, how are cows able to flow around? How is feed able to flow? How is water flowing? How are the things, how are water positioned? How is the feed positioned? All those things is what we look about, how the cow barn feeds the cows. If you have big cows, then you have enough cubicles where they can feed. If you have smaller cows, again, the same way. We begin to look at to what extent is a barn suitable for the cows. And if we see problems, then we give you a low score. And then we ask you to improve. And then from uh, later on, of course, you can be able to have a better score. Remember that cow barn construction is an expensive affair. So it is actually better to get it right from the beginning because when you get a recommendation to redo or to improve, it always costs you money. You can imagine steel and wood and such, iron sheets and so on, very expensive. Now the third part in this area is the skill sets and the supervision routines of your workers. Are they skilled in the first place? Now this is one of the ways where we, how we are able to gather this information. We do an interview on your workers. You could just go to where the cows are lactating or where the feed is being mixed or the area of, of the calf area and ask the workers, tell me how you handle this, uh, how, how do you feed your calves? How do you feed your lactating animals? How do you this, do this or that? What is dry matter in your feed? Now we look at how are workers skilled for the work that you have given to them. Then how well do they know their duties? Do they have a job description? Do they know what they're supposed to do? Because there are many workers and the tasks are mixed up. Do they know what they wake up to do? And then, do they also know the target of the farm? Are they driving their performances towards a certain target? How, how harmonized is the idea of the farm director of the owner with the workers? Do they know where you're going? Do, you know the, do they know the KPIs? Are they working towards them? And then, what is the, how prompt are they able to deliver the duties? If the routines are saying that um, the cow barn should be cleaned out of any dung on the floor by 11 a.m. If I come there at noon, I expect that the barn has been cleaned. If it hasn't been cleaned, then um, I should think that maybe the routines are not strict. Because an hour later, maybe there is more dung and a cow can slip away, break her spinal cord, her backbone, and then the cow is lost into a butcher instead of uh, continue to produce in the farm. So that means that not being very strict with the routines could actually cost the farm a lot of losses. So it's very important to check uh, and to score how promptly the routines are done. So are the workers aware of what routine is daily, what routine is weekly, and what routine is uh, occasional? For example, if I go to the young stock and the water is finished, and then someone has to remember to put the water. There's no routine that says what time the, work, the, the water is supposed to be put. Then of course, I'm going to give you a low score. But if there's a routine, then it can't be forgotten. And then I give you a high score. Then the other part under the area of skills and supervision is also the coordination of the workers in terms of management meetings and the workers' meetings. How regular are the meetings done? Are these meetings recorded in minutes? Are the targets indicated? Are the workers able to communicate to the owners of the farm about certain challenges and also to give feedback on why they're doing certain things or why they're not doing certain things? So are there meetings instituted in that farm where everybody can communicate and are those meetings recorded? And also, how are other workers who are not, who are not the regular workers of the farm coordinated around the farm. For example, there is a vet, there could be a consultant. These two people will help the farm at the one point or the other. But then the question is, are they also part of the bigger picture of the farm? Are they involved in the meetings? Or do they come at different times and give different views? The view of the vet should be heard by the feed consultant. The nutritionist should also be heard by the economic analysis uh, consultant so that all of them are driving, driving the farm towards the same area. And then finally, under this episode, we're talking about recording and analysis and decision making. In this area, we score the accuracy of the records. But in the first place, we have to check how many records are available. Maybe the farm just records milk, doesn't record the calf weights, does not record the stock, the, the feeds that are coming into the farm from the farm or from, uh, from the fodder farm or from where they are being bought, does not record the calvings, does not record the insemination. So there's so much recording that is not done. 
So we check are the records in the, in the first place available, whether they are manual or they are electronic. Then we check to what extent are these records analyzed. For example, if you are doing a calf weight and then you indicate, you indicate that the calf is X heavy, X kgs heavy, but then you don't subtract the weight of last month, we don't see the difference, then we are not able to determine what is the percentage of our weight gain achievement. Now that ability to know that I'm at 60, I'm at 60 percent in terms of weight gain achievement is, is an analysis level and therefore the person can make a decision to feed the calves better to attain that weight. So we don't just check rec recording because recording is not just for recording sake. We also check the analysis and we also check is there any evidence that that farm makes decisions as a result of the records they keep. Is recording informing decision. That connection is what we score, we give a high score. So when you come to your farm, we are going to score the accuracy, the ability of the records, and your ability to use the records to make accurate decisions. This brings us to the end of this episode where we have discussed four sections. Let's meet in the next episode where we discuss the three final sections of the benchmark. And as usual, remember to subscribe so that we can continue learning together.